Hello and welcome to another Overlord Lore video and today we are going to take a closer look at the newly founded Sorcerer Kingdom of Ein's Old Gone and how powerful it is, already on its very own, without the might of Nazarick. So we are going to talk about the Sorcerer Kingdom and just the Sorcerer Kingdom. And this version will be completely devoid of any spoilers. Now if you want to know how powerful it eventually becomes, I already made a video detailing the future extent of the Sorcerer Kingdom. And I also did an analysis of the Sorcerer King's armies and of its capital city, Irantel. But they all contain spoiler to some extent, so you have been warned. And with that said, let's dive into the burgeoning might and the problems of this young nation. And first and foremost, we are going to cover the territorial extent of the Sorcerer Kingdom at the end of season number 3 or at the start of season 4. Because while the only major city the Kingdom of Riestais has handed over after the massacre of the Cuts Plain has happened was the fortress city of Irantel, it nonetheless came also with the control of the surrounding lands and villages. So right off the bat, we have not only a major urban center and the capital city of Ainz, Old Gones Sorcerer Kingdom, but also the very fertile land surrounding it, including its villages and of course the village of Karn. And by the way, this map right here is based on the map present in the ninth novel, but I added the approximate borders to the best of my abilities. While the Sorcerer Kingdom is situated literally on top of three major trade routes, connecting the kingdom, the empire and the theocracy, Thus far, no traders were mad enough to enter a realm controlled by a supposedly life-hating undead. So currently, the Sorcerer Kingdom can't capitalize on its great location. Furthermore, it is also a land-locked nation and therefore hasn't any access to the oceans and its unrestricted trade, furthermore decreasing the potential wealth of it. And of course it doesn't have a trade or a war fleet. Furthermore, a sizable chunk of its population had left after hearing who had won the Battle of the Cuts Plain and that their city would be given to the Sorcerer King. The only exception from this is the village of Karn, which has greatly increased its population due to Enri's summoning of the goblins, but again, most of its inhabitants are now goblin soldiers who need to be instructed to farm, new dwells need to be dug, and new fields have to be created. So while this population has expanded, Khan also faces severe economic problems and is currently dependent on the Great Tomb of Nazarick for food and water. And as far as the new world is concerned, the city of Irantel and the villages surrounding it, such as Khan, are all there is to the Sorcerer Kingdom. But this isn't the case. In fact, the first part of the Sorcerer Kingdom had been conquered all the way back at the start of the second season or to be more precise, in the fourth novel. This includes the Forest of Top, the Lake of the Lizardmen and their conquered territories, because they, under Cocutus' instructions, have conquered the Toadmen and their respective territories and lake. But since the human population is completely unable to survive, in normally such a harsh, monster-filled environment, the territory was basically unclaimed by human nations and therefore could be conquered without causing any problems by the Sorcerer Kingdom. So the Lizardmen with their restored food production, the Toadmen and any other heteromorph and demi-human settlements within the Forest of Top and any other forests bordering the Sorcerer Kingdom for that matter fell to Ainz even before Irantel did. So aside from the fertile fields surrounding Irantel, the Sorcerer Kingdom has access to lumber, herbs, fish, fresh water. We have visual confirmation of at least one river and considering that the Sorcerer Kingdom borders so many mountains, they are likely far more than just this one. And while its demi-human and heteromorph population had expanded, the human population had declined sharply alongside its economy. But even with this precarious state of its economy and its declining population, and even without the aid of the Sorcerer King and Nazarick, the Sorcerer Kingdom in and of itself is basically inconquerable. Situated between mountain and forests, 
the triple walls of the city make it extremely defensible. And even if the city should fall, the forest of top would be a great base to conduct guerrilla warfare. Furthermore, Henry, who is loyal to the Sorcerer Kingdom and her goblin army, who is loyal to Henry, is both numerous and powerful enough to defeat the armies of Rhea's ties, especially after the disastrous defeat of the kingdom as well as the Imperial Legions. Even if they hadn't been so demoralized after witnessing the devastating defeat of the kingdom, as well as most other states. Additionally, the Lizardmen on the Kokaitis, who were already great warriors and recently ended a successful campaign and brought the Toadmen under their control as well. They also have one Hydra at their side. And basically any heteromorph and demi-humans already living under the Sorcerer Kingdom's rule could be mobilized if the need would present itself. Also at this point, some very limited amounts of humans might be willing to fight for the Sorcerer Kingdom if paid well enough. So while the Sorcerer Kingdom could defend itself on its very own, its declining population and economy exerts a great amount of pressure on its leadership. And how Eins will respond to these challenges will be shown in the fourth season. For today, this is it. And I say thank you very much for watching and special thanks to Dash 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 Bad Guy Ben C Chrissy Crowley 0221 Sia Death is Mercy Deathless Dragonlord Dystopia Dystopia the Second Phil Ralshivan Guy with Dead Head Hector Marino Hoss Haster Jacob G Jana B Jason Chromius Legendarius Lelouch Ribetania with a Mustache Lexus Fox Lord Nishikian Rai Lord Touch Me Merovec Mr. Shoes Mr. Tweaker Michael R Michael Y O'Kill Overlord General Gasper Paddy Pantom Personage Primus Eleven Shadow Lightning Wolf Shrine Keeper Texas Deer The Orc Warboss Rock Ed Smasher T. E. Vang Vash Hawkeye Vegito 27 Venture Fanatic Wilhelm and Zonagon. Thanks guys. Anyway, have a nice day and I hope to see you all again soon under my next video.